Hey everybody, my name is Dan. It's nice to meet you. Do you know what this week is? Yes, it's the week before Easter. Today is Palm Sunday, and we remember that Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross to die for our sins. Each week we ask, what is God like? This month, we've been talking about God's glory. God's glory is its all of the wonderful, incredible things that are true about God, all put together. God shows his glory in many ways. He showed it when he created the earth. He showed it in the cloud, in the desert. He displayed his glory last week in the story where Jesus went to the mountain. As we think about Jesus this week and his great love for us, let's remember that God's glory, it's complete in Jesus. God shows us who he is in Jesus. What is God like? He's glory. Say that with me. What is God like? God is glory. As we get into our Bible story, let's remember that the Bible is, it's a lot of little stories that tell one big story. So far, we have learned that in the beginning, there was nothing. And then God created everything. Everything that God created was good until Adam and Eve chose to rebel against God's perfect rule. Their sin caused everything to fall apart. Thankfully, nothing happens apart from God's plan, so he promised to send a rescuer to fix what sin had broken. Now, thousands of years passed, and God's people had, they had many ups and downs as they struggled to obey God. Eventually, God kept his promise. Jesus was born, and he grew up, and he never sinned. And he traveled Israel, teaching people and working miracles. One of the things that Jesus spoke often about was the kingdom of God and the ways that it would come into this world. Our story today is called Kingdom Parables because Jesus used parables, which are stories with a deeper meaning, to help people understand what the kingdom of God is like. Let's listen together about some of the stories that Jesus told. One day, Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Large crowds of people gathered around him, so he got into a boat and sat down. All the people stood on the shore. Then Jesus told the people parables or stories to teach them about the kingdom of God. Jesus' disciples asked him, why do you teach in parables? Jesus answered, Not everyone will understand the hidden truths about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus reminded them about some of the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Some people look, but they do not see. Hmm. They hear, but they do not listen or understand. Oh. Jesus made these prophecies come true. Jesus said, you are blessed because you do understand. Jesus told a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it grows taller than the garden plants. It becomes a tree and the birds come and build nests in the branches. Jesus continued. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven or yeast that a woman mixed into 50 pounds of flour. The leaven makes the dough rise. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field that a man found. He reburied it and then he joyfully sold everything he had and bought that field. Then Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine oh. pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Oh. When Jesus finished teaching the crowds, he left that place and went to Nazareth. For a second, I want you to imagine how silly you would look to your family and friends if you sold everything you owned just to buy a bit of land. It's likely that people around you would think that you've lost your mind. Land can be valuable, but selling everything, it's kind of extreme. 
At least it seems that way until you come back from your new land with a chest of treasure. God's growing kingdom is more valuable than anything the world can offer. But to people living in the world, it doesn't always seem that way. When we give up things to follow Jesus and be in God's kingdom, we might seem a little silly too. But what's sillier? Giving up something that will eventually fall apart to gain something that is perfect and lasts forever? Or holding on to something that won't last instead of chasing after something wonderful? You know, one thing I love about these parables that we learned today is how Jesus is talking about things that grow out of nothing. You know, um, when we bought our house, we've been here um, a little over 10 years now, and one of the first things that we did was we put a garden in our backyard. And we thought it would be really great to grow like tomatoes and cucumbers and green beans, and those were great, but one of the things that we started growing that we've really enjoyed the most has been sunflowers. Have you ever seen a sunflower grow? It starts as a, a really little tiny seed, and, and you put it in the ground, and, and it grows, and it, it starts out just like a little plant. But after a while, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And, and we get sunflowers sometimes that are eight and 10 feet tall in our backyard. They get so tall, and the flowers get so big that they bend over because of the weight, because they've grown to be so large. Isn't it amazing to think about something so small growing and becoming something that is so large and, and heavy that it almost wants to fall over? I just love the story about God's kingdom this way because it tells us that, that God's kingdom, it's, it starts out small. It starts out like an idea. It starts out like just a little thing in a person's heart. And God says that that's not where it ends. It grows and it grows and it grows. God's kingdom, it's growing and it will continue to grow. That's what I love about this story. It's, it's about life. It's about growth. And I want to be a part of that. So as we think about God's kingdom, let's learn a new Bible verse. Paul wrote this passage as part of a letter that he wrote to a church in Colossae. Paul explained the change that faith brings. When we have faith in Jesus, we move from a kingdom of spiritual darkness, a kingdom of sin and death, to Jesus' perfect kingdom of light and love, grace and mercy. Our verses are found in Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Pray with me. God, thank you so much for creating a perfect kingdom and and God, thanks for inviting us to be a part of it. And God, I pray that you would use us in your plans to continue to grow your kingdom in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.